If hearing Dash talk about championship points has piqued your interest to learn more about the hottest commodity in esports, head to lolesports.com. Also there you can find VODs of previous shows where Dash has explained those sweet, sweet points. But right now, we're going to turn our attention to the next match with Team Dragon Knights versus Team Liquid. After successfully knocking out Winter Fox in the Summer Promotion Tournament, Team Dragon Knights have come to West, uh, the West Coast to uh, take over. However, due to visa issues, TDK will be fielding three substitute players. Yeah, an unfortunate week for TDK. Taking over the mid lane will be a player some people know quite well, Bishu, who used to play with Alltech and Glebe yeah. on the Shounder team, Cloud9 Tempest, covering their AD carry position before their Korean player gets here, is another challenger player, Latman, who was most recently playing with Frank Fang Gaming. And in support is Baby, formerly Baby Eater. He played with COG's sub squad when the regular team went to Korea for that boot camp last year. That boot camp, though. That boot camp, though. And it is a difficult position to step into because it's a new team. Uh, they don't have much time to practice, obviously. But honestly, we have seen in the past, sub-squads have been able to win a game or two. So they also get the LCS experience, and they can make cases for themselves as looking to find permanent places right. with LCS teams. So definitely an opportunity for these guys. And they'll be facing one of the oldest teams in the league, Team Liquid, also previously cursed in their aging. Le Liquid ended the spring split on a high note, and they looked better as a whole, with Phoenix and Piglet playing in step with the rest of the team. Yeah, Team Liquid really did make an impressive late surge. They claimed third place, and they were able to break the curse of Fareth for fourth. Uh, however... That was a couple of good weeks of play if we really look at the whole season during playoffs because the split was fairly mediocre overall. They were only sixth place in the regular right. season. So it will remain to be seen if Team Liquid can maintain that high level of play with their time off, their vacation trip to Hawaii, and really use that momentum in the start of the split. Right, and one of the rocks for Team Liquid was their top laner, Quas. And when asked how he felt once again to face Seraph, Quas was confident that he knew what to expect. I think Seraph was a decent player. Um, I didn't think he was too challenging in lane. And I think his team fighting was a little bit lackluster. He did like to play some some stuff that wasn't necessarily meta. He was a big fan of Shivana when not many people were playing Shivana, if I remember correctly. And also has been a big fan of Italy for a long time. So I don't expect him to play anything out of the ordinary personally. I think um, if his team needs him, he'll just play whatever tanks there will be. But it, he could still surprise me with, with like a pocket pick. So. I think he's right, but I'm hoping for the opposite because yeah. Seraph has <laughs> just been saying with this team, I now have freedom. Before, when I first came over, I kind of had you know nothing to lose. I just wanted to learn, and he knew that he was kind of tempered by CLG and what they wanted. Now, no longer measured, no longer tempered. He can do what he wants, and the team pretty much gets behind him. Yeah, well, it's a change of mindset because when Seraph was on CLG, he was trying to enter CLG's system. But now on right. Team Dragon Knights, this is very much Seraph and his own ability to express himself. So, I mean, even looking at the games they played to qualify for the LCS. He goes top lane, damage Nidalee, and just starts <laughs> split pushing. He was pretty much the first adopter, uh, and more frequently than other people, of the smite teleport top lane. He did it on Gnar at one mm -hmm. point. He just crushed some of the games in the challenger scene, really overmatching his opponents. So now in the LCS, it'll be very interesting to see how well he can perform against the more seasoned North American LCS players the second time around, especially with a team that has a lot of trust. Absolutely. Got to feel good to be back in. Now let's get into the action with a quick roster rundown. On the blue side, it's Team Dragon Knights. That's Seraph in the top lane, Kaz in the jungle, Bishu in mid, Latman at 80 carry, and Baby at support. And of course, on the red side, it is Team Liquid. Kwasu we just heard from in the top lane, I will dominate in the jungle, Phoenix in mid lane, Piglet on 80 carry, and of course, the season deck special. On support. The season X special indeed. We'll see if Seraph now has synergy with his new team, if Piglet and X special have come to synergy in the well, bot lane, and that trust and communication is there for the team in general. The thing that Seraph could hope for is he still has Kez. That's the guy he played with throughout the Challenger Series and right, the qualification. Right. So that's the only synergy TDK has there. The rest of the team, unfortunately, will be the subs that they haven't had much practice with. Also, they have the added disadvantage uh, because of some league penalties for late submissions and such. Uh, all of their bans are gone. So yes. they have no ability to ban champions away from Team Liquid, uh, basically meaning Team Liquid gets a lot more freedom in their strategy to pick pretty much whatever they want, target banning away specific things from TDK. Hopefully they can channel their inner EDG and get, get through while losing their bans. It's definitely going to be difficult. You can't pinpoint the teams you want. However, in an unknown team, 
I mean, maybe they can kind of pull out some ace up their sleeves and whatnot that isn't played in the meta that is a comfort champion to them as well because Team Liquid has not been scrimming against this team for these past few weeks. Maybe even not a lot of these teams have met up with each other just yet. Yeah, this Team Liquid team will be looking to build heavily on the momentum they had last split. And, you know, Piglet, he's been trying to make that rush for rank one in the North American solo queue. <laughs> he's so close to getting it again and again. I think he's currently sitting around number two. Uh, very, very dedicated player himself and Phoenix since they moved in, playing sometimes too much solo queue because they'd be tired for scrims in the morning and they wouldn't be able to contribute at the highest level, just almost burning themselves out just practicing sometimes. So occasionally Tim Liquid needs to pull it back a little bit, make sure that the players are able to relax and then prepare for this. As far as good starts in the North American LCS split as well, yeah. Last split, Team Liquid did start 2-0 and then fell on some difficulties. They're going to be looking for another 2-0 start this week. Very true. Dominate said, keep in mind that, yeah, we had a 2-0 start, but anything can still happen. In a situation like this, you're going to be playing against these guys. Hopefully you can beat them, because if you lose, then you don't know what you're going to be facing when you do get the real composition, and it's, it could just be even more difficult. Every game is, you know, whatever, game to game, take it as, it, as you will but it's definitely going to play on your mentality when you've lost to an entire sub-squad and then you try to go back and yeah, play. No one, no one wants to lose to the sub-squad, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, we can see Dominate just having some minor issues. That's what the delay is for right mm -hmm. now. Peter, their coach, walking around in the background. It's been interesting tracking him as a coach throughout this LCS season because he's had some really brilliant pick and ban phases that have been... Yeah. Very lauded, great synergies, everyone on their right champions. Then occasionally they'll just do this really strange thing that ends up backfiring entirely. It ended up happening, you know, during their playoff set against Cloud9 when they were, you know, a game away from actually making it into the NALCS finals. And they ran the Juggermaw composition, which was Kogma Lulu, and everyone was expecting them to complement it with something like an Ezreal or a Corky mid. And they ended up, instead of letting Quas play Lulu top, which is one of his best top lane champions, they threw him on Scion, put the Lulu mid, and then really just lacked damage throughout the yeah. whole game. It was, you know, a somewhat strange thing. Sometimes it seems like Team Liquid outsmarts themselves mm -hmm. because they're all so versatile, especially Quas can play so many champions. Uh, but later on in the third place game, they really narrowed down to specifically the champions they wanted to play in. We'll hopefully see more of that this split. Absolutely. I I'm sure in the beginning of the split, it's obviously going to take teams to get back into it. Everybody's going to be like, yeah, this and this. But hopefully these teams that have been here can explode and carry the momentum they had coming out of the last one. Like you said, Liquid running off of that third. But I'd be glad they weren't fourth, breaking the curse. Yeah. Uh, the players said to them, it wasn't a huge thing, but it obviously feels good to kind of get something like that off your back as people kind of hold on to it more than you do. We are just about to get ready to get into picks and bans here for our second game of the North American LCS Summer Split. And 2015 is underway already with Cloud9 taking down Team Solo Mid in one heck of a battle as kind of a seesaw yeah. back and forth. One way was tilting down for Cloud9 and then tilted right down for TSM. Definitely a game to watch after today. Don't go and watch.